the world might have been through some tough times, but never tougher than the years between 1929 to 1939. The world's greatest economist at the time, John Mayard Keynes, who argued for an increase in government spending. Milton Friedman, who threw some light into the Federal Reserve System, didn't have much solution to proffer during those deadly moments. That the world witnessed a soaring consumer debt, a decrease in industrial productivity, the crashing of the stock market in October 1929. In the United States, unemployment rose from an almost 0% to more than 25% in May 1933. When we put it in terms of numbers, it meant about 15 million Americans were jobless, some with the most critical levels has not even been able or capable to afford a decent plate of food, nor shelter. It was in the midst of all these that a savior figure rose with eyes on the less privileged of the society. Of the stock market in October 1929 rather spurred this man called L. Capone to his greatest work of philanthropy yet. His real names are Alphonse Gabriel Capone, born in Brooklyn on January 17, 1899 from two Italian immigrants, Gabriel Capone and Teresa Capone. He's possibly the greatest gangster of all time, who was nicknamed the Scarface. But he was also a businessman. As the Great Depression was on its full swing, Capone opened a charity with no name. That may come as a surprise. On the doorpost of his charity was written, free soup, coffee and donuts for the unemployed. This was done at 935 South State Street in Chicago, South Loop neighborhood. In mid-November 1930, to be frank and to be honest, hundreds and thousands of Chicagoans were out of work inside. And inside the building, women dressed in angelic all-white apron were so busy serving roughly 220 people per day. They did so without asking any question as to where the people came from or their ethnicity, their race, or generally their background. Nobody really cared who was behind such a great work of charity. Chicagoans who had been beaten left, right, front and back and even on their centers by poverty, unemployment, homelessness, and hunger raised no eyebrows. All these and all they cared about at the time was the fact that they could fill up their empty bellies, gather some strength, and ignite some hopes in them for a better tomorrow. 
A.L. Capone's image that was worst at the time due to his role in the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, where his men were believed to have assassinated seven men, gradually regained notoriety. In April 1932, the charity was closed down, with the government stating his charity will no longer be needed as the economy was getting back to his feet. Al Capone was charged for tax evasion, arrested and sent to jail in Alcatraz. He was eventually released in 1939, but he was totally battered mentally and physically. Even after his death in 1947, Chicagoans will never forget the act of charity during those dial moments in their lives. He just might have done what economists wouldn't and couldn't predict by feeding thousands of hungry Americans and saving thousands of lives.